like many of you sitting here today, have been through some bad experiences in life. Even some pretty traumatic ones. The day after I was invited to come and do this talk, I went through another one of those traumatic experiences and I thought, great, <laughs> what perfect timing. Here I am being asked to do a TEDx talk on resilience, one of my actual life goals, and it feels like my world is crumbling around me. So I drafted an email back in my head. I'm sorry, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make that. I'm currently lying in bed eating crisps and I don't think I'll be out of here in three months when you want me to get up on stage. I spent two days in bed and on the third day, I got up, I washed, I put on some relatively clean clothes and I sent a real email back. I'd like to talk about how it takes me three days to get out of bed now instead of three months. I'm pretty sure the lovely organizers at TEDx were like, who on earth have we asked to come and talk? But when we talk about things such as resilience, grit, determination, and bouncing back, it's important we remember three key things. Number one, we are all going to go through bad experiences. There is no sugarcoating that. I didn't want to get up here and do a talk on how to avoid bad experiences because if I knew that, then I'd have lived a very different life. Number two, it's perfectly okay to lie in bed and eat crisps sometimes. I think there's a lot of hustle culture out there nowadays, not just for work life, but for life life as well. Fall down, get straight back on the horse. Every minute you lie in bed crying over your trauma is another minute wasted you could be living your dream life. This kind of Instagram toxic positivity gives me the ick. And as humans, it's not really how we deal with bad things happening. Bouncing back straight away will lead to a lot more problems later on. If we don't spend time processing, we'll end up with other unhealthy coping mechanisms, which I'll get to. And number three, just like in a game of chess, when life tries to put you in checkmate, it's important that you have a whole range of different strategies to get yourself out of the danger zone. Learning just one move and practicing it over and over will never win you a game of chess. So having a whole toolkit at your disposal is far better than just one method. So today I want to focus on how we bounce back without unhealthy coping mechanisms or burning out, and the different strategies I used that you can add to your own toolkit the next time your world is turned upside down. So I've made this really super scientific graph here, and it shows the number of traumatic experiences in my life and the number of days I think I probably spent in bed after them. So you can see in the beginning, I had a very unhealthy coping method, and actually this one's pretty common. When we feel as though the world is against us, it can be so hard to get out of bed, shower, or do all of those things that just seemed so normal before. This one here is when my mum passed away. I was 17, it was completely out of the blue, and I actually lost count of the number of days I spent in bed after this traumatic event. I was later, unsurprisingly, diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. This negative one here, though, is seven years later when my dad passed away. Now, you might be thinking, perhaps she just didn't like her dad as much as her mum. But actually, what I learned here was another unhealthy coping method, and one you may also have experienced. I threw myself into work in a big way. 12 to 14 hour days, soaking up every bit of hustle culture literature I could find. I felt like I had to make him proud, and I couldn't slow down or stop. I was trying to squash down any kind of emotion or grief in the hopes that if I just got back on the horse, it would all go away. Except it didn't. What happened was I ended up with high blood pressure, high cortisol levels, and I was getting really ill. I was burning out. What I thought was resilience and grit 
was actually just another unhealthy coping mechanism. And looking back, I can see how both, in their extremes, are just as bad as each other. So when I managed to drag myself out of bed within three days and not throw myself headfirst into a pile of work recently, I knew I had to work out what had changed and share my strategies with you, even if it helps just one person bounce back without burning out. Looking back at the changes, I managed to pinpoint four key strategies. Number one, play to your strengths. Number two, set goals and work purposefully towards them. Number three, treat yourself like a garden. And number four, surround yourself with the right people. So, number one, play to your strengths. We all have strengths, right? We're just a lot better at focusing on our weaknesses and what we want to improve about ourselves than actually looking at our strengths. The VIA Institute says everybody has 24 different character strengths in varying degrees. And using these to your advantage can reduce stress, increase happiness, improve your work performance, and even make you more confident. When I found out the order of my top five, kindness, creativity, perspective, love of learning, and humor, I was pretty shocked. It turned out that I'd managed to create a business that used all five of my character strengths without even realizing it. I found these out a few months after setting up the Anti-Burnout Club, which is a wellness platform that brings together dozens of different experts to help people reduce stress levels and avoid burnout. I was using these character strengths every single day and something amazing happened. When I went through bad experiences, I didn't want to stay in bed for too long. I wanted to get up and be doing the work that I loved. But also, I didn't want to throw myself headfirst into a pile of work either. I didn't feel like I had anything to prove. I wasn't trying to show the world that I could be successful or that I could hustle hard. I just wanted to focus on bringing kindness, creativity, perspective, love of learning, and humor into the work that I did every day. So find your character strengths and look at them each in turn. How can you use these in your life going forward? Perhaps you want to spend a little bit of time each day developing them, or maybe you want to create goals and career choices around them. Doing what you love and what you're good at will make it easier to drag yourself out of bed in the morning and get back into bed in the evening feeling fulfilled. Number two, set goals and work purposefully towards them. It doesn't matter if your goal is to get out of bed or to climb Mount Everest. What matters is having, to work, is having something to work towards every single day. When I didn't have a goal, when I was aimlessly just hoping to get through the day without running out of ready salted crisps, it was so much easier to fall into unhelpful thinking patterns like, what's the point? As humans, we flourish when we're working towards something that fills us with purpose. And when you find out your character strengths, this becomes a lot easier to do too. If your number one character strength is love of learning, then maybe you want to get a master's or a PhD or read 60 books in a year. If your number one character strength is creativity, then maybe you want to write or draw or paint every day, even if it's just for five minutes a day. Your goal could be big and audacious, like helping a million people, which is one of mine, or smaller and more manageable for where you are right now, like getting in 10 minutes of movement every day. Whatever your goal is, make it a habit to work towards it purposefully every day. You don't need to make huge strides. Just one small action that gets you closer to your purpose-driven goal will make it easier to get out of bed, put down the crisps, and bounce back. Number three, treat yourself like a garden. So imagine your life as a garden, right? The bad things that happen in life are the weeds. And the good things, the new and exciting experiences, 
are the seeds. Now, if all you did was de-weed your garden and pull those weeds, deal with the bad things in life, then you wouldn't have any weeds in your garden, sure, but it'd be pretty bare. But if all you did was focus on planting seeds and looking for those new and exciting opportunities, then your garden would quickly become overrun with weeds. So we need a balance of pulling the weeds, dealing with the bad things that happen in life, getting therapy for them, or whatever de-weeding your garden looks like for you, and planting the seeds, looking for new opportunities, being open to new experiences, seeing the good in every day and practicing gratitude. Find what pulling the weeds and planting the seeds looks like for you. For me, pulling the weeds was some pretty intense therapy sessions and planting the seeds was saying yes to things that scared me, like being here right now. Practices such as yoga, meditation, breath work, these can all help you tend to your garden without burning out too. What's important is that you find what works for you and you spend a little bit of time each day tending to your metaphorical garden. I'm useless with real gardens. Every houseplant I've ever had has wilted away. But when it comes to my metaphorical garden, it's definitely getting a lot easier with time, patience, and practice. And finally, number four. Surround yourself with the right people. Whilst all of these strategies have had a big impact on my ability to bounce back, this strategy has been the most life-changing. When I was in the depths of depression, I would look for those who wanted to sink into the depths with me. And it's only when I started to swim out that I saw so many other people on the surface. These gorgeous human beings who were just trying to keep swimming. I found community groups for pretty much every bit of trauma I've been through in my life, from living with an alcoholic through to fertility issues. And every single group welcomed me with open arms, as if to say, it's safe here. When I created the Anti-Burnout Club, I knew that I wanted to do the same, and it's now one of the most beautiful groups of people I've ever had the opportunity to meet. These are the people who have lived through experiences just like yours, who have learnt from them, grown from them, and now have their own lessons to teach. I've learnt more from these people than any other book. Their compassion will fill you with love and light. So if you take just one thing away from this talk, it's to find your people. Some of them are probably in this room with you right now. This group of brave, like-minded people who have all been through their own bad experiences and traumatic events. Talk to them, learn from them, grow with them. And just know, whatever you have faced or will face in your life, you'll never have to face it alone. Thank you.